like to give you a tutorial on SSH. Um, as usual, we have a little agenda here on the side. So SSH is a way for us to be able to remotely connect to a computer. And this has existed for a long time. Um, before SSH, there was something called Telnet. But the problem with Telnet is that it wasn't encrypted, and so someone could just eavesdrop on your connection and see exactly what you were typing. So SSH has replaced that, and it's, it stands for Secure, if I can type it out, Secure Shell Connection. But the H is the shell, so Secure Shell. OK, so let's connect to um, the computer science department's server. So I issue the command SSH because that's what I want to do. And I want to access this account at um, ssh.cs.uwf.edu. Now you may have this come up and you may not. Here it asks if um, I think this host is authentic. and I believe it is, but this is a good precaution. So yes, I'd like to connect. And you can see here it added um, it to my known RSA hosts. You may not have this happen. So all of this uh, will come up. And you can see here I happen to connect to cs-ssh2. So you can see that that's not exactly the same thing as this address. So what's going on here? Well, as it turns out, um, this ssh.cs.uwf.edu is an alias for a number of servers. So if I just cancel this login, you can cancel a process by hitting Control C. Um, maybe I want to log into a specific server. Maybe I know that one of them is malfunctioning. So I could connect to cs-ssh1.cs.uwf.edu. And apparently that one's not accepting connections anymore. I could try three. And see, since this is a different machine, I didn't recognize it. So there's number three. Um, and last I checked, there were five. So anyway, I want to go ahead and log in now. So I'm going to put in my ArgoNet password and okay here we go I'm logging in again and I wasn't here too long ago either so let's see where I am with the present working directory okay so I'm in my ArgoNet under my user and I'm going to go ahead and move into my documents directory and let's pretend that I've already used FileZilla or something, and I have uploaded my code, and I want to test it. So I would do this the same as I would from a command line on my own computer. After all, it's still a bash shell. So I guess I could, since I don't have a make file here, um, I could use GCC, and I just let it do its thing. So you can see it compiled a dot out and there it is, it's good to go. And just like on a local machine, um, if I have a problem, um, let's comment this out and recompile. Um, look at this, I've got a warning. I have an implicit declaration of printf. And that's because I'm calling printf without importing the library. So I can go back into here, run the insert mode, delete that, and I should be back in business. So that's just a little overview of SSH. I hope this helps you in um, testing your code on the testing server. Now keep in mind that you can upload and test your code here, which is the computer science department server. However, you can only upload code to the testing server that 
Professor Reichertzer has set up for this class. You can upload code, but not, but not uh, SSH in there. So what you need to do is upload your code also to your account on the computer science department's SSH server and test it there. And that's fine because both server environments are identical.